Welcome back to Combat Sports Weekly. A lot of familiar faces here on the round table. So guys, let's get it started. A lot of topics, round table. Joining us first, he's the editor for Bleacher Report MMA, Brian Oswell. Welcome back, man. It's been a little Good bit. Good to be here. Yeah, it's been a while. Glad, I'm glad the, to have you here. The callback. Yeah, you'll get another one soon, man. All right. James Lindemuth, 610, the sports animal. When can people catch you? It's going to be every Thursday at uh, 515 and then mornings and afternoons during the week as yeah. well. And I, I just hang out in front of the building and yeah. wait, wait for you to ask me to come and in. And another so. guy that hangs out with you screen right, Micah Frankel, Cage Minds. MMA, CageMinds.com. What else you on, man? I just keep putting Cage Minds in like three pages. You'll just keep finding <laughs> me. You can't get rid of me. Yeah. Well, welcome. Let's get it started right away. I'll start with you. Micah, the Robbie Lawler versus Carlos Condit, I guess, post-fight thoughts. That was the worst decision I've ever seen. You think so? I'm not, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to go that big. Worst decision wow. in recent memory, at least a year or two. I feel that was that was horrible. 84-strike discrepancy. I don't think Lawler really won any part of that fight except little second increments. One big right hand wins the second round. I thought the third round was clearly Condit's, and everyone loves the fifth round. If you really look at it, three minutes, the first three minutes was all Carlos. Robbie did bring it hard for a minute, but it wasn't like Carlos just ate everything. He was ducking. He landed shots to the body. He was still being offensive the whole time. I thought it was clearly four to one once I rewatched it, because in the excitement of watching Watching it after he won the first three of the first four rounds, I was just thinking, if he's standing by the end of this, he has the title. Who cares what happens yeah. in the fifth? And for the record, you told us you watched it 12 times, and I yeah, believe I've that watched you watched it 12, it 12 times. times. <laughs> I've dissected it. I've done it on slow mo. I've become obsessed with this fight. Yeah. It's not healthy. Yeah, James, you were in Vegas like I was for this one. It was a technical fighter versus a brawler. What, what did you think? I, you know, I, I called some of my co-hosts from 610 the minute after the fight, and I was livid. I was losing my mind. <laughs> and obviously, I'm a homer. You know, right. I, uh, Carlos is a good friend of mine. We've known each other for, for quite some time. So I went back and rewatched it. Now, I didn't watch it 12 times, <laughs> but I watched it a, a, another time. And I think it's 4-1 like I thought, like he said, 3-2 at best still with Carlos. Mm -hmm. I still have Carlos getting 1-3 and 4 and I, and I think he deserves that belt. I do think it was a bad decision. Now, is it the worst decision I've ever seen ever? Probably not. Boxing has had some, some travesties in, in their past as well. Pauli Malignaggi is the one that pops right to head. But, you know, I think Carlos deserves that belt. I will give Robbie credit, though. The class act with the way that he acted afterwards, saying there's two winners here, you know. He, and, and when they asked him if he feels bad about winning or keeping the belt, he said no. He said, you know, I went out there and I put everything on the line. That's all I had. Right. So class act from Robbie. Uh, I hope Carlos comes and gets that, that rematch, though. I really do. Brian, you help run that Bleacher Report MMA uh, Twitter handle. What did you think and what were a lot of reactions on Twitter for you? Yeah, I think what, what they've said, you know, from, from the 3-2 to the 4-1. To the the, to the mm -hmm. You know, I, watching it live, I scored it 3-2. I watched it again, uh, mainly to, to watch the third round and make sure that I right. thought that. The fifth round, uh, I didn't really dissect it the second time I watched it. It's in interesting, you know, there's this, there's this split with MMA fans. A lot of them watch it with their head and more watch it with their heart. And there's something about Lawler, he just kind of whammies people, right. and maybe it's the way that he looks and just this crazy aggressive style, this Tyson-esque thing. Even when he's like, you know, throwing and like got, got a guy up against the cage, and he's not even, uh, not even all the punches are landing, but it, it maybe looks it or looks feels. Good, yeah. Like, yeah, and yeah. I think the judges are in the moment, and maybe they're, they're just voting with their heart, or they don't really know all what to look for, but the discrepancy in the amount of volume is just is mind boggling. Right. You know, the, the record, 84. Yeah. 84 strike discrepancy, a new record for a title fight or any fight, I believe it said yeah. for the right. victory. Yeah. And you touch base on this a little bit, so I'm going to get your guys' thoughts here. I'll start with you, James. The 10 point must system, is it still a good way to go? I feel it is. It, it, I think it is, but I think the, the officials need to be maybe coached or is there some sort of like monitoring system so that they know what you know because you right. could certainly make an argument based on the damage that was done in the fifth round you, you could probably score that 10-8 for Lawler if you really felt like it but then if you look at the strike discrepancy in the fourth round then you could score that 10-8 for Condit easily so mm -hmm. I, 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 the, I don't know that there's a better system out there and Joe Rogan made some comments on Twitter about you know there needs to be a change or it needs to be handled better I don't know what the answer is. I think they just need to be 
more informed about how to award a 10-8 or a 10-9 right. or even a 9-9 if that if that's the case. And you hardly ever see 9-9s or 10-10s. The judges just don't like to do it. Right. Yeah. Micah, very quickly to wrap up on this topic, what do you think? 10-point must system, what do you like? Road FC said they're going to implement a new system where they give uh, one point for a clearly landed strike, a clearly landed takedown, stuff like that. A knockdown gets five points. That sounds all great in theory to do a point system, but we're having judges that can't add up 10 and 9 rounds, so I don't know how adding <laughs> up a whole set of points. You're going to have to have like three guys per one judging station trying to figure out what they saw. So it's convoluted, but probably the 10-point must system is the best that we have available. we got to move to the next topic. I'm sorry, James. But Holly Holm's new deal with the UFC, it sounds like it's an eight-fight deal. Very quickly from each one of you guys, what do you think? And potentially next opponent. I, I, I think it makes sense that she gets a big deal. Um, it would be nice if the UFC actually released financials. You know, like in every other sport, we know what players are making uh, uh, on the up and up, but they have the reasons why they don't. Um, you know, and then, then the number eight fights is kind of meaningless because they can cut anyone at right. any point after a loss. Um, I think her next fight seems like it's going uh, with a Misha Tate fight. Um, Holmes has been really pressing. She wants to fight soon, and I think she probably had the leverage in that contract negotiations to get a fight if yeah. she wanted it. Right. James? Well, and I think he's absolutely right. I think, you know, Lenny now has the upper hand when <laughs> negotiating with the UFC. He definitely Lenny does. Lenny is uh, Holly's manager. I think he now has the upper hand. I think that they probably did control that, and I do see a Misha Tate fight. Right. And after that, how soon before we get that Rousey fight? I don't think, honestly, I think Ronda's not ready yet. Yeah. Uh, mentally, physically, I, I think that she's still, like, you know, they said six months. I think eight months is probably yeah. a better projection as far as when we see her fight again. And obviously it'll come down to what happens if Holly does fight Misha. That will determine when and where Ronda fights. Micah? It's going to be Misha next. That's going to happen in March. We'll see Holly back in there in the summer, I think, against either Amanda Nunes or Juliana Pena, and then she'll close wow. out the year against Rousey. Eight fights sounds great. She fights six of them before she retires. Wow. This guy watched that fight 12 times, and he did a great job of breaking <laughs> down what the possibilities are and going to be with that one. So, I mean, that sounds pretty damn good. It's not what I had lined up, but, you know, it actually does make sense. But nonetheless, eight fights, you don't know for how long. You don't know if she's going to fulfill those. I mean, I don't know if I see Holly Holm fighting past six fights in the UFC, but you never know. We'll see how, you know, she's in her mid-30s now. We'll definitely see how Let's she'll continue Carlos to develop. Just get Carlos back in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. We'll see if Carlos does come back. But nonetheless, that'll do it for these three topics. Thank you guys, as always, for coming in. New year, we're going to keep track from here on out our prediction. So stay tuned. We'll start that next week. And you guys stay tuned as well for another episode next week of Combat Sports Weekly.